Well, let me first of all just say that there has not been a more fetishized word in business and in life in the last decade <laughs> than, than, than resilience. And the problem with resilience is that resilience is one of those words and ideas that grew up back in the linear age, back when our lives were shaped by the factory and by industrial manufacturing. The resilience actually is a term of physics that emer that began with the spring. And so the idea was that you would pull the spring and how resilient, quote unquote, the spring was, was how far the spring would spring back into its original position. So that implies uh, that you go back after going through a life transition. And some people go back, but frankly, many more people go sideways or forward or to a different direction altogether. So resilience is not the model. And the pandemic is a perfect example of this. If you think when it first happened, we all thought, oh, we're going to wait six weeks and we're going to go back to normal. Well, it's we're, we're looking at a year plus at this point. And what we've mm -hmm. now learned is we're not going back. We're going to a different place. And in fact, that's why when we get in you know, as we go forward in this conversation to start talking about the various kind of stages and phases of a life transition, that the first one is to say goodbye to the world that is not coming back, the world without the loved one or without the job or uh, without the title or without the, the legs or whatever has been lost uh, in the original life quake. So instead, what happens is that we rethink what's important to us. And so kind of the, the, the quick and dirty on the idea of the shape back to the original shape conversation we were having is that we there's kind of three pillars we have uh, to how we make meaning in our lives. I call them the ABCs of meaning. And the A is agency, what we do or make or create. The B is belonging, our relationships, our colleagues, our friends, our loved ones, our co-religionists, the people we volunteer with. And then the C is a cause, a, a calling, a purpose, sort of something higher than ourselves. So we all have a way that we kind of balance these. I'm an I'm an ABC. I'm a writer, so I'm very agentic. I'm very involved with family and a very active dad. And cause is kind of less important to me. My wife, Linda Rotenberg, who starts, who started and runs a, an organization called Endeavor that supports high-impact entrepreneurs in 50 countries around the world, she's very cause-oriented. She gives back to entrepreneurs all over the planet. Then she's very agentic because she's you know, a founder and a builder and a social entrepreneur relationships, you know, she tolerates the rest of us. So she's like a CAB. So what tends to happen when we go through a life quake is that we rebalance. Like maybe we've been working very hard and we want to spend more time with our family, or maybe we've been a caretaker or caring for an, an aging relative or a, uh, you know, a child. And maybe we're, not, we're now moving on from that and we want to give back, or maybe we've been giving back in our career and we want to do something more for ourselves. So what tends to happen in these life quakes is because they are sort of breaks in the normal, they are opportunities, and in some ways I would even say obligations, to rethink what's most important to us and allows us to kind of breathe, take stock, and maybe then shift our priorities somewhat.